Namaste and welcome to Pramanic Astrology Channel. I'm your host Prasad Mahasani. Help you raise your vibrations and become your true self with the help of Vedic Astrology. Please just comment if you are able to hear my voice. Are you able to hear my voice? Great, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yes. Okay, great. So today we are going to discuss about uh, Rahu into the sign of Taurus and Ketu into the sign of Scorpio. We have already discussed about Rahu Ketu in Aries and Libra. You can go and watch that video as well. We are also going to cover the questions from your comment section. So if you have any question, please put them into the comment section. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So Rahu and Ketu are like ascendant and descendant. So when it goes into the sign of Rahu, into the sign of Taurus. See, here is the thing about Rahu and Ketu. Rahu, when it goes into certain houses, shows the area of the opportunities. Okay. Suppose you have Rahu and Ketu into the first and seventh house. So what it shows is in this lifetime, you have to focus on the first house and seventh house. Your life focus will be automatically in this, in these two houses. And why only these two houses? And what is the significance of Rahu and Ketu? Why Rahu and Ketu becomes so important? Because if you look at the Rahu and Ketu, Rahu and Ketu are the points of intersection. They are the mathematical points of intersection of Earth's orbit. Okay, so in the creation of Rahu and Ketu, there is involvement of sun, which is the soul, and the involvement of moon, which is the mind. And these two life forces create Rahu and Ketu. We all have the mythological story of Swarabhanu as well to it. But involvement of sun and moon makes this combination, makes these Rahu and Ketu important and makes these Rahu and Ketu karmic planets. So when you have Rahu and Ketu placed in certain houses, those are the areas of the life you have to focus on. It may be 1-7, 4-10 or, or maybe 3-9, 5-11, 6-12. It can be any of these combinations and these houses will become the prime focus in your life. These modalities, these two forces have their own way of dealing with that house. Rahu is all about the obsession and a futuristic planet as you know. It, it always about the obsession, but Ketu is the planet which is all about perfectionism. It will make you Think about absolutes, right? And when you have a Rahu placed in certain houses, that is the house, the, how the things signified by that house will be the most scary things for you in life. If you have Rahu in the first house, the very concept of knowing yourself or being yourself will scare you. You will not be able to Know yourself. Why? Because now you have Rahu into the first house of Dharma, of your personality. So now you don't know who you are. And what happens when you don't know who you are? The problem is you end up having a wrong partner. That is the Ketu in the seventh house. And you focus on working with the seventh house things. And the person always complain that he's having problem with the partner. But the problem is Rahu in the Dharma Trikon house. 
Rahu into the house of personality. That, that's how the Rahu works in the houses. Okay. But Rahu into the sign of Aries in the first house is different than Rahu in the first house with Leo, with Cancer, with any other planet. It's not the same. Because now you have two planets, two different planets, which are controlling your karmic axis of Rahu and Ketu. In this video, we are going to talk about Rahu into the sign of Taurus and Ketu into the sign of Scorpio. Now, the most important planets for you will be Mars because it is ruling the Ketu and Venus because it is ruling the Rahu. Now, the first thing you have to look for is where are your Mars and Venus are placed in your birth chart. That will give you an idea about how this Rahu and Ketu will behave. First thing you have to look for is the Lord of the Rahu and Ketu. Next thing to look for is the house of Rahu and Ketu. And when I say Lord of the Rahu and Ketu, you have to look for them in a, in a collective way. Like the Lord of the Rahu as well as the Lord of the Ketu. When you look into that, in this case, we have Mars and Venus. Now, this makes things even more interesting. We always talk about the conjunctions. Suppose you have Rahu and Ketu into the sign of Taurus and into the sign of Ketu. You have Taurus and Scorpio combination for this. Now, if you have Mars and Venus conjunction in your chart, this Mars and Venus conjunction won't be the same conjunction if you don't have this combination of Rahu and Ketu in this axis. Or even for that matter, Rahu in Aries and Ketu in Libra. They are also ruled by Mars and Venus. Right? So now Mars and Venus conjunction becomes highly karmic for you. Now it becomes even more significant for you. Okay. So the first thing which really signifies, we talked about the lords, we talked about the houses. Now we have to talk about the Rashi. What is the significance of the Rashi of the Rahu and Ketu? Houses signifies the area of the concern or the area where you have to work in. Rashi or zodiac sign gives you the reason. It will give you the reason for that, you know, that imbalance or that disharmony in this axis. There is always going to be an imbalance or disharmony in this axis. And that is the most challenging part of any chart. If you can solve the mystery, if you can fix your Rahu and Ketu, I would say 90% of your problems in your chart are being taken care of. Just focus on Rahu and Ketu. Okay? And that will help you. Now, when you have Rahu and Ketu in certain Rashis, that gives you the reason why the Rahu, is, Rahu and Ketu are behaving in the way they are. When you look at all these things collectively, now these things start making sense to you. Now, we have not even talked about D9 chart. We have not even talked about Nakshatra. We have not even talked about any other thing. We are just talking about the placement of Rahu and Ketu. Placement gives you the area and uh, Rashi gives you the reason or the how they are going to manifest. And the Lords will give you where exactly these things are heading. Let's talk about Rahu into the sign of Taurus. Taurus is the second sign into the zodiac belt. It is the sign ruled by Venus, which is materialistic planet, which is all about wealth 
which is all about the security, which is all about the things which you value, right? And that's what happens. Venus dominates Rahu. Now, a person with the Rahu in the sign of Taurus amplifies the qualities of the Rahu, uh, amplifies the quality of the Taurus. Taurus are steadfast. They are reliable, stable, because, because Taurus is a fake sign. Now, when you have Rahu in on your steadfastness, which was your strength, if you cannot control it, I hope I'm about, are you able to Okay, so we are talking about the Lord. So when you have uh, the Lord of the Rahu as Venus, now things are going to mm, become more materialistic. Okay, and now the all the qualities of the Taurus are amplified. Let me just check chats. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Aura. Yes. I appreciate that. Okay, so when when you have Rahu in here, all, all the Venusian qualities get amplified and you become material. But at the same time, you have Ketu into the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is a mysterious sign. Scorpio is a hidden sign. Scorpio is a fixed sign. Scorpio is ruled by Mars, and Mars and Ketu are friends because they they have uh, similar nature. Okay, because Ketu is the things which we have achieved in the previous life are the things which you have achieved in the previous. Life. When you have Ketu into the sign of Scorpio, it shows in the previous lives this soul has explored to the hidden things of the or mysteries or occult he, this person has dived deep into the mysteries or occult sciences and have tapped into those secrets now he holds all these secrets and is into this combination now universe will reveal its secret to this person with the ketu in the Scorpio sign. Okay. Now again, you have to look for the placement of this um, K2 in your chart. It may be into the 10th house, then, or it may be into your first house. Okay. We will try to talk about the houses as well. If you want to, uh, if you want that house voice as, as well, please uh, ping me on chat if you want to listen to the housewise placement of this uh, Taurus and uh, Scorpio Rahu Ketu as well. Okay, so Scorpio and Ketu, let me just read these comments now. Okay, and if you are if you are getting some value from this video, please hit the like button. It, it helps me to understand that you like this video, okay? And if you don't like, hit dislike, that's okay. Paresh Sanghani, can you go over the house placements when Rahu, Ketu are in these signs? How would the placements of Venus and Mars play into the effect. Thanks. Paresh, yes, this is an important, uh, this is an important part because now Rahu and Ketu are shadow planets and their lords become important. Here, you have to understand Rahu, ascendant is not a planet, but ascendant is important, right? So the Lagna Lord is also important. And that's why the Lord of the Rahu and Ketu becomes important. And that's why you will always hear this, that Rahu and Ketu gives results as per their laws. Why? 
because of this reason so paresh ji mars and ra mars and ketu mars and ketu excuse me mars and venus becomes vital for this combination extremely important the dignity of the venus dignity of the mars will determine whether this rahu and ketu will be able to perform in healthy way will be able to work in a higher plane okay this is extremely important and he is saying if you he, how would be the placement of venus okay uh, can you go over the house placements when rahu and ketu are in the sign okay so rahu and ketu suppose you have rahu into the sign of taurus into the first house okay let's take some other house we have talked about the first house a lot right let's assume you have rahu into the seventh house in the sign of taurus what it, what it shows is first thing first thing is you have ketu in the first house into the personality it shows that you have to be grateful towards the partner there are few things which you cannot do it on your own you need somebody in your life you need partner you need companionship all those six and now when rahu is into the seventh house in the sign of taurus it shows that this person needs to be stable if you can focus on yourself if you can you know appreciate the other person this person will become stable in your life otherwise you will hear lot of things about the rahu into the seventh house many negative things as well but it's not about the rahu in the seventh house you will hear because rahu in the seventh house your partner becomes chaotic or difficult or all sorts of things you will hear is because of the ketu in the first house when you have ketu in the first house in the sign of scorpio what it shows is you you hold that signification you hold you feel like you know that secret about yourself the mysterious scorpion sign into the first house with ketu shows you are so confident about yourself that you know the secrets of the universe and you know it all and the, guess what the truth is you know it okay but you don't feel the need for the partner the, the taurus rahu and that's where the challenge is okay that's how you can judge the rahu and ketu through taurus sign okay we have received us the the selectic alpha gen switzerland thank thanks for the interest thank you for the super chat i appreciate that thank you okay so when let's take another example if you have rahu into the fourth house or if you have rahu into the even better let's take rahu into the 12th house of your horse so 12th house is all about the loss and all the spirituality and abstract things and now there goes the illusion but this is the part of the 12th house the rashi element is the reason is now it shows why you want to be stable. and it shows you have to be careful and you have you have to be careful with your health because now you have headless ketu into the sign of scorpio into the eighth into the sixth house of work daily routine diseases right so if you keep on working you might invite some disease as well in your life right so that's how you judge any rahu and ketu suppose you have rahu into the sign of taurus into the fourth house and ketu into the 10th house and you have 
Mars and Venus conjunct into the sign of, let's say, Capricorn or Pisces, where either Mars is exalted or Venus is exalted. Now these two lords of the Rahu and Ketu are conjunct. It means a lot. It means that your life path, the lord of these two houses are conjunct and are now in a good dignity. Okay. And now it shows that your Rahu and Ketu will be working on a higher plane. There are, there are almost 20 to 30 points to consider before we can really see what's happening in there. But the conjunction of the Lord is also one of the important, uh, important aspect of it. One of the important point of it. And if it has the dignity, if it has a placement, it, it goes on to the next level. And even better, if these Lords conjunct with either of the Rahu and Ketu, now things will change even more. Suppose you have a Rahu conjunct Mars. Rahu Mars conjunct into the sign of Taurus. And Venus Ketu conjunct into the sign of Scorpio. Now what's happening? Now the Lord of the Ketu is conjunct with the Rahu. And the Lord of the Rahu is conjunct with Ketu. Or you have Mars and Venus conjunct Rahu. So the Lord of Rahu and Ketu, both the houses is conjunct with Rahu. Now what it shows is now the Lord of the Ketu, the houses, the, the Lord of the Ketu conjunct the house of Rahu shows the house where Rahu placed in will be manifested more. You have to focus more and more on Rahu. We always talk about that that we have to focus on the Rahu, the opportunity lies into the Rahu area, but it becomes even more if it is conjunct with the Lord of the Rahu or Lord of the Ketu. On the contrary, if the Lord of the Rahu and Ketu conjunct with the Ketu, then the manifestation will be through Ketu. You have a lot of karmas connected with Ketu. Okay? And if you want to go even deeper, Look at your ascendant. Look at what's what's what is the Venus or Mars means to you. Suppose you have, uh, say, Leo ascendant. So Mars becomes Yoga Karaka planet for you. And now, if it is exalted or if it is conjunct with Rahul, now things will change. Now things won't be same. So when you guys ask me in comment section, I have Rahu into this house. So what's happening? So it becomes difficult for me to reply to it. I will have to ask you a lot of questions about it. Then only we can reach out to that uh, ultimate interpretation. Okay. And all this, again, we have to look on the basis of dashas. If you are looking for any predictive uh, aspect, like the timing, you have to look for the dashas. The the your horoscope will show what is the potential and the dasha sequence all the dasha sequence the chara dasha yogini dasha kala chakra dasha vimshottari mahadasha all these dashas most importantly vimshottari mahadasha will give you an idea about when your chart will tell you what you have a gajakesri yoga you have a Dhada Yoga, you have Raj Yoga. Okay. What are the planets involved into it? Okay, it has Sun, Jupiter, all these planets. But you are not going through those dashas. So they are not going to manifest in a big way. You have to count on the Antar dashas. So the, the chart shows chart shows what is the potential and uh, the Dashas will tell you when it is going to manifest. Rahu into the Taurus, Ketu into the Scorpio. When you have these two energies, another thing which is most 
common about these is you have to balance the material pursuits with the occult because ketu is ma- ketu has mastered the occult things ketu feels extremely comfortable into the sign of scorpio because ketu is a spiritual planet who seeks moksha okay ketu is a headless planet i have to use the word planet but it's more of a graha it's more of an ascendant those who are new i'm just repeating it those who knew it i'm just repeating it for those who just you know watching this for the first time so i just have to use the word for the sake of language so well, ketu is a headless planet right so when you have a headless planet in any of the uh in the in the sign of scorpio it gives you that uh great comfort with the occult or mysticism they are used to it. they 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 understand occult as if they know it from the beginning okay that is the sign of scorpio and ketu in it okay next question is from d west what if you were born on a full moon with this placement of rahu in taurus ketu in scorpio okay great question when you are born in full moon that is that is purnima you have you always have sun opposite of moon okay and rahu and ketu are always opposite so when you have full moon in taurus and scorpio and if you have rahu and ketu into the sign of scorpio you have rahu and moon conjunct in the sign of taurus and you have ketu and sun conjunct into the sign of scorpio okay the first thing which really stand out for this conjunction is involvement of sun and moon okay sun and moon are you know responsible for the creation of rahu and ketu and now they are conjunct with the rahu and ketu so you can you know you can experience and you can l- learn about the eclipses as well but as a conjunction what's happening here is ketu is conjunct with the sun what is the sun sun is the significator of the soul sun is the planet which shows yourself a person with a great sun is confident he knows who you are he knows who he is okay and now he has ketu ketu is another planet which is you know who has the knowledge from the past life now that conjunct the sun now it becomes even more spiritual so this person the west ji this person will become even more spiritual this person will be sorted this person will be uh, having a well defined self because of this conjunction as well as it has conjunction of rahu and moon which amplifies the moon energy which is the mind okay but more significant is the sun ketu conjunction in the sign of scorpio which becomes even more spiritual two spiritual planets sun and ketu conjunct next is candy floss is this kubera yoga uh, i don't know next the west okay yes waiting to hear fourth house please astral goddess 1212 okay rahu in the fourth house we have made a video uh, you can go and watch that but the interesting thing about rahu into the fourth house is fourth house is the house of your emotional stability fourth house if you look ex- astronomically is the house which is right below your feet that is your foundation that is your emotional foundation that's what mother cultivates in a child she gives emotional stability samskar to a child makes him capable of facing the challenges and now you have a shaky foundation here due to rahu 
into the fourth house. So what you have to do is you have to be true to yourself. If you are true to yourself, all your problems will be nullified with Rahu in the fourth house. You don't have to do anything with this. Why? Because when we have Rahu into the fourth house, we often try to fool ourselves with the false emotions. I'm not saying it, they are faking or they are not uh, they are lying to themselves, but the that illusion of Rahu, the Maya makes them uh, what's the right word? Will make them believe into the other emotion. What do I mean by that? Suppose I'm angry. If I'm angry, I should be angry. But if I'm angry and I stop talking to you, I stop eating and you're constantly asking me, why are you not eating? What's wrong with you? I won't say I'm angry. I will keep, I will make you guess and that will frustrate you, the other person, those who don't have Rahu in the fourth house. So the Rahu in the fourth house person have to be themselves, have to be true to their emotions. If you're angry, show your anger. If you're happy, show your happiness. Be it negative emotions, be true to your uh, emotions. Because now you have Rahu in the fourth house. And the moment you fix this, the tenth house things will improve. I have seen people with the uh, Ketu in the tenth house, they have the greatest capacities to work. Because if you ask them to work or if you ask them to do something, they are the best at doing something. But if you ask them to sit idle and do nothing and just feel what you feel, they will be frustrated. They cannot do this even for 10 minutes. If you ask a person with the Rahu in the 4th house and Ketu in the 10th house, just sit down, idle, not even meditating, just focus on the breathing and just observe what you feel, they cannot do it. If you ask them, get up at 3 o'clock, take a bath, go for a walk, come back, do this, do that, and then you will, you know, get the enlightenment. In the next 10 years, you will get the enlightenment. They will do it. But sitting idle for the 10 minutes is impossible for them. They cannot do it. Okay. I hope this has helped you in your answer. Okay. Next is Samantha. Glad to see you live. Yes, hear you. Thank you, Samantha. Priyanka. Yes. Okay. Subramanyam Kar Karpur. Hi, G. For the Rahu Ketu transit, I'm going to experience my Rahu Ketu return. Rahu in Kritika, Ketu in Anuradha. Okay. Rahu return is, is huge. I would suggest you to go back to your Rahu and Ketu um, returns and look what decisions you took during that time. Those are the most transforming era of your life. They will come in 18 years. They will come after 18 years into the same sign. Suppose you have in natal chart, you have Rahu into the sign. Which, what was the combination? I just missed that. Okay, Rahu in Kritika and Ketu in Anuradha. So if you have Rahu in Kritika and uh, Ketu in Anuradha, and after 18 years, 36 years, and even after 18 years, it is it will keep coming into the same points. Just note that if you're old enough, just go and look for the previous couple of you know, days of the Rahu return and you will be surprised to know how many times you have this, this kind of transformation. Now, what kind of transformation, good or bad? Now, it depends upon where is your Rahu placed in. Suppose I have Rahu placed into the sign of Taurus into the ascendant and now we have Rahu coming into the sign of Taurus. Now I will, it will physically transform myself. Now it will be, you know, it will make me work on my physical body. 
and first house is also the house of your face and rahu is a futuristic planet okay so you might see something like i'm coloring my hair when it was a taboo when it was a taboo coloring your your hair i will have a pink color of hair or blue color of hair and you will be like what right or you might see a physical transformation in your physical body you're hitting the gym you're going to the gym right and again you have to look for the lords of rahu and ketu here where they are placed in what are their dignities what is their condition in your chart all these things will make the difference and will change the interpretation but yes for transit and rahu ketu returns it is all about the transformation and change most of the times it is sudden change because of the rahu and ketu because of they are the change agent and this is about depends upon the house and the rashi okay next question heather evans more loud and clear reaching thank you for the confirmation yes subramanyam ka to how will the transit be i think we discussed this rahu in taurus in the third house okay rahu in the third house in taurus now third house rahu is all about the communication i would say this communication will be rahu is an intelligent communicator he is you know i won't say he is deceiving you but it is maya and illusion if if a person with the uh, rahu in the third house is into the marketing or sales he will you know he will bring in the sale he is a closer rahu in the third house is a closer he will close the high tickets like this he will bring in the revenue for the company he is the master of the he is the master of the communication but at the same time i feel um, with the ninth house things you will have to be careful okay you don't have to rely upon the ninth house and also on the parents as a collective parent next is aura i have rahu in scorpio and ketu in taurus aura we are going to cover all these rashis we'll cover that your question i will most definitely cover your question and if you have any this question you can put in the comment section i will reply to it but right now we are talking about ketu into the scorpio do you have any question around that i will most definitely answer that okay mm-hmm. bt can you explain when rahu ta- when rahu taurus in the 12th house and ketu scorpio in the 6th house forming a kala sarpa yoga uh, i don't know about kala sarpa yoga okay so i won't be able to help you my apologies and thakuria sir my rahu alone in the 9th house in taurus ascendant and my mahadasha also rahu is going on what kind of effect can i expect please tell sir i won't be able to tell you do you have rahu into the sign of taurus or you have rahu into the ninth house for taurus ascendant uh, i did not get that if you still have a clear question just put that i will cover that question as well aura dark night okay space cat hi space cat thanks for thanks for dropping in we're having rahu ketu opposite okay samantha north node in taurus south node in scorpio yes that's what we are discussing samantha you have in specific question around that please share veda murti my venus in scorpio mars in capricorn samantha so conjunction dark night kale chips kale chips is saying can you explain rahu in taurus ketu in scorpio for leo ascendant 410 axis while mars is also in the fourth house with ketu i think we discussed just that i think we discussed just that uh, okay so if you have ketu in the fourth house conjunct with the uh, mars what it shows is 
again k2 and mars are friends i won't say friends but they are they are having the similar nature you will you will find both of them them have a similar nature they are you know action oriented they want to take an action and all those significations matches so when you have this conjunction here what's happening is the lord of the k2 conjunct the lord of the k2 so for you we always say that go to the rahu house to fix the k2 no for you you have to go to the k2 house you have to work on the k2 because most of the manifestation will be through k2 if you have venus also aspecting here or conjunct the rahu then things will again change but for, with this conjunction of mars into the k2 the lord of the k2 conjunct the k2 you have to focus more on k2 house that is the fourth house next candy floss 184 high displacement of rahu is kuberia no no um on on this in that okay moon and rahu in ascendant for scorpio ascendant cancer ascendant ketu and saturn con we are we are talking about rahu ketu in anupraj ratnakar kasturi rahu in 8th house taurus depositor venus conjunct moon in 11th house how do you expect the shot to be rahu in the 8th house in taurus and venus conjunct with moon in the 11th house so when rahu in the 8th house of taurus on seven okay so when you have rahu conjunct the the lord of the rahu conjunct with moon moon is the 10th lord for the libra ascendant now the one of the kendra house of career conjunct the lord lord of the rahu which is amplifying energy conjunct into the 11th house of gains so i would interpret this as gains sudden gains because involvement of rahu as well as 8th house lord into the house of gains and 11th house is also the second to the 11th so i would consider this as a sudden gain in your career okay next saubhagya beruya in leo ascendant ketu and venus conjunct in the fourth house four five six seven eight it goes into the ketu and venus so ketu again here the lord of the rahu is conjunct the ketu again you will have to focus on the venus house excuse me the ketu house and not the rahu house which we talk about otherwise here lord plays an important role ashu gautam so try to answer the question which question ibrahim p please also explain effect of this placement on marriage seventh house physical well being first house of scorpion i think we discussed about rahu in, uh, ketu into the first house and rahu into the seventh house samantha please explain the house 10th house you mean ketu into the 10th house or rahu into the 10th house okay so bhagya beru kindly reply on the leo ascendant ketu venus in the scorpio okay we have already discussed that gemini ascendant rahu in taurus transit will be 12th house of okay i'm just reading just be with me i'm just reading the questions just stay with me i'm i'm going to answer all the questions as many questions as i can just be patient and be with me gemini ascendant rahu in taurus transit will be 12th the house of loss gemini ascendant rahu in taurus transit do you have rahu into the uh, 12th sign as well this is a question from veda murthy 
Veda ji, do you have the uh, natal Rahu into the fourth house, excuse me, the twelfth house as well? And the transiting Rahu is going on? Just please comment down there. Otherwise, twelfth house is a misunderstood house. Yes, it is the house of loss, but what loss? Twelfth house is the house of the loss of energy. Twelfth house is the house of of course, it is about the financial loss, but if you look at the 12th house, 12th house is second to the 11th house of gains. Like it's the Dhanasthan to the Labasthan. And if you look at the Dhanasthan, the second house, the 12th house becomes 11th from the second house. So the 12th house is second to the 11th and 11th to the second. So it is the house of gains to the house of uh, finance. And the house of finance to the house of gains. So I would interpret this as huge gains from foreign sources as well, or travel abroad can be seen with the 12th house transit. Don't feel worried. If you want, you get a consultation from an, your family astrologer and you know try to understand these energies. Don't don't get worried and don't get scared of this. Next is Mamu Jais, please explain the combination of Rahu in the 5th and Ketu in the We have already made a video on that. What if you have a Kala Sarpa in this dignity? I don't know. DRED, Scorpio Ketu on Ascendant. Leo Mars on Midheaven. Cancer Venus in the ninth house. This is interesting. When you have Ketu in the 1st house, you are extremely hardworking person. You Nobody can match your uh, hardworking nature, okay. And now you have Ketu, you have Rahu, play, uh, excuse me, Mars placed in the tenth house, which is aspecting this Ketu, the Lord of the uh, Ketu. Okay, so now it you know helps to helps Ketu to perform better. Next, Anjali Sharma, Rahu Ketu in Makar Lagna. Rahu Shukra in the seventh house. Anjali ji, unfortunately, we cannot talk about this today. Today, we are going to talk about Rahu Ketu in the sign of Taurus and Scorpio. Sohil Shah, uh, what kind of Rahu Mahadasha results can we expect with this placement, especially through, uh, through the eclipse? You, through the eclipse mean you have a natal chart having an eclipse or through the transit and eclipse. But anyway, when you have this kind of place, this kind of Rahu, I, I, I feel you're saying this kind of Rahu mean Rahu in the Taurus and Ketu in the Scorpio. Again, the same thing. And when you're judging Mahadasha, you have to judge the relationship of the Dasha Lord to all the planets. Like all the planet gets a turn to rule you. Suppose you are into the Rahu Mahadasha, you of course you will be ruled by Rahu for most of the time, almost 18 years of your life. But you will have Rahu Rahu, you will have Rahu Jupiter, Rahu Saturn, Rahu Mercury, and so on. So you have to look for the nakshatra of each of these planet the Antradasha planet and check its connection with the Rahu. That is called Tarabal. And when you look at that Tarabal, it gives you an idea about what kind of results you can expect during that period. Okay. You can, you can expect what kind of, you know, it has like uh, Sampath and Pratyari. All, all these are, there are nine types of the Tarabal. Okay. Depending upon what is the number. It is a simple calculation. Uh, maybe we can cover it in some other video. But yes, you have to look for the Antradasha. Don't just rely on single plan. Next is Hans Rudolf Shatavishasan. 